So for the longest time, I've been doing most of my computer-based work with two computer monitors, to the point where even when I travel with my laptop, I now travel with an external USB-powered secondary display. So it could be said, without overstating things, that I am a huge fan of using dual monitors. But the question still remains, does using two monitors actually make you more productive? Do you need a second monitor? Well, that's the question that I hope to answer for you in this video. We're gonna give you the pros, the cons, and also go over some alternatives to dual monitors that might actually fit the bill based on the kind of work that you do. And to just spoil things up front here, the answer is it depends on the work that you do. I've actually gotten some comments in previous YouTube videos from people asking me why I would ever use a dual monitor, it's a distraction, it's extra money, why would you ever do it? And my answer to those people is actually a question. That question is, have you ever done professional video editing? Because for professional video editors and for other people like programmers and UI designers and Photoshop jockeys, is that an actual job? They have jockey on the job listings for people who use Photoshop? Uh, maybe. Either way, some types of jobs, some types of work require or at least are very, very benefited by extra screen real estate. So when talking about the pros for adding a second monitor, the main one is that for certain types of work, it adds a lot of useful space and that lets you do some useful things. And let's use video editing as an example. My editor, Tony, is right over there and he uses, actually, how many monitors do you use? I got three now. You have three, ed okay, you have three monitors <laughs> for video <laughs> editing. So when you're using a video editing program like Premiere Pro, you actually have several different little windows inside that main program that you're accessing all the time. And if you're working on an itty bitty little monitor, that preview window and all of your other windows are gonna start getting really, really small and it gets harder and harder to use them. So when you have a bigger monitor, you have more space to get things done and adding a second monitor just expands your capabilities even more. And it's not just video editors. Let's take programmers or web developers for a secondary example. If you were building a website, you could use one monitor to have a column for your HTML file, a secondary column for your CSS file, and then the other monitor could be purely dedicated to the browser window so you could actually preview your work by refreshing the page. And the same can be said for UI designers. When I do UI design, I have a program called Figma open in one monitor, and that program really needs a lot of space to work well. And and then I've got reference material or inspiration or notes open in a second monitor that I can easily look at just by turning my head or moving my eyes. So that's really the main pro of having a second display. You get more screen real estate to do work either with a single application that can benefit from two different displays or with combinations of applications that you want to have open at the same exact time. Though we also can't fail to mention that two monitors on your desktop just looks cool. And that's a pro as well. So what about the cons? Well, the main con that I see with having more than one display for your computer is that it really encourages multitasking. When you have a ton of screen real estate, you can feel tempted to put a ton of different programs up at one time, or you can go overboard like I did in college and start using desktop customization programs like RainMeter to have like your computer's temperature and your calendar and like the time in Singapore on one window, which is really just pointless. And from a cognitive perspective, the way that your brain pays attention to one specific task or stimuli in its environment is not just like shining a spotlight on one thing. It kind of works like that, but there are also filtering mechanisms. Your brain actually works actively to not pay attention to everything else that's going on in your environment. That's why you can pick out a single conversation at a crowded party. Your brain is actively working to block out everything and not really pay attention to all the other extraneous conversations. But the more things that are going on in your environment or the more windows you have open on your screen, the harder your brain's attentional muscles have to work. So by putting all of these things up on secondary displays, you can make it harder to pay attention to the one task that you need to be doing. And that's really the main drawback of multiple monitors, that temptation. Of course, there are also more practical considerations as well, such as the cost. When you have to buy another monitor, that can be a hit to your wallet. Also, if you're anything like me, when it comes time to upgrade 
monitors, you're gonna have to upgrade two displays because well, you can't stand having mismatched displays on your desk. And speaking of the desk, you also need to have a bigger desk to accommodate multiple displays, especially as they get bigger and bigger, and they also take up more of your desktop space. Now, I will note that I've kind of gotten around that problem by using uh, monitor arms that clamp to the back of my desk, but still, the desk has to be wide enough to accommodate those monitors. So when it comes down to it, the question you need to ask yourself is this. Will the work that you do benefit from the addition of a second display? And will those benefits outweigh the drawbacks? And before you try to answer that question for yourself, I do want to give you a couple of different alternatives. The first one is to try using virtual desktops. Windows, Mac OS, and most Linux distros all have a feature that allows you to create multiple virtual desktops that you can switch between. For example, on Mac OS, I have probably four of these set up at any given time, and I can easily switch between them by swiping either left or right on the trackpad with four fingers. And while I definitely do prefer having apps on multiple displays where I can just move my head and see them both at one time, being able to switch between desktops is at least a heck of a lot more convenient than trying to switch between overlapping apps on one desktop. Of course, there is a way to make sure that those apps don't overlap, which is to use the Windows snapping features in Windows to have apps sitting right next to each other, each filling half of the screen. Now, on Mac OS, there are no built-in window snapping tools, but you can spend two bucks and get a really nice utility called Magnet, which basically gives you all that functionality and even adds in some extra tools like being able to snap windows to the corner or to thirds of the screen, and there are even keyboard shortcuts. The third option is just to use your phone or a tablet like an iPad or Tony, what's the one you have? An S6? Tab S6. Tab S6. Yeah, either one, if you already have a tablet or a phone sitting around, could function as an additional display. Obviously, you're not going to get as much screen real estate, but for some uses, just having a little display that costs a heck of a lot less than a monitor could be really, really useful. Now, obviously it's not gonna work for single applications where you wanna put say Premiere Pro Windows onto a second display, but say you're writing a paper on your regular computer monitor, you could easily have reference material or research up on your phone. Or for another one, if you're editing a video and you have a checklist of items that you need to check off as you go, you can put that on your phone as well. Option number four would be to consider an ultra wide monitor instead of two regular monitors. And this is actually what my editor Tony uses Though again, you have three monitors, so it's one ultra wide and then two more monitors. Yeah. Because you're one, ridiculous. And one is vertical, so like I can see like <laughs> Slack messages. Okay. So one's vertical as well. So with these ultra wides, you don't get that annoying gap in the middle that you would have with two regular monitors. And again, you do get more screen real estate. But it's important to know that with most ultra wide monitors, even though they are called ultra wide, they're really only kind of ultra wide. The aspect ratio on most ultra wides is 21 by nine, or actually 64 by 27, but most people don't wanna remember those big numbers. So 21 by nine is close enough. While regular monitors, regular, have a 16 by nine or sometimes 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So what this means is that an ultra wide, even though it looks super wide, is not going to double your screen real estate. It's more like a 1.3 times increase. The one exception to this rule are the ultra, ultra wide 49 inch monitors. And those literally do double the screen real estate. I think they have like a 5,120 horizontal pixel count, but those are pretty darn expensive. And yeah, my friend Ali Abdullah actually does have one on his desk and a link to his desk setup video in the description. But for my money, two 27 inch normal 16 by nine monitors works a little bit better. I can get them in 4K and they are a bit cheaper than buying that one huge hunk and 49 inch monitor. Now there is one other alternative that you should probably consider if you're still using a 1920 by 1080 or 1080p monitor. And that's to, instead of getting a secondary monitor, simply upgrade your main display to what's called a QHD monitor, which is gonna have a resolution of 2560 by 1440, or it's called 1440p. That might be all you need. And I will note that the monitors on my editing desktop are 4K, which is even bigger resolution, but I found that having those at native resolution actually makes text and all the desktop elements way too hard to read to be productive. So I actually have my windows scaling set to 150%, which makes it effectively 1440p. And yes, the text rendering is a bit smoother, but that's probably not worth the price increase you're going to pay for 4K monitors. Now, a couple of things that you might want to consider in case you do decide to add a second monitor. 
First, if you are a programmer or you're somebody who likes to see lots of lines of text, then you might wanna get a monitor that has a swivel mount, which allows you to turn the monitor sideways and then set your desktop to portrait mode on that monitor. Now, if you have a monitor that has a visa mount on the back, which allows you to put monitor arms on it, and the stand you get by default doesn't matter because most monitor arms you're gonna get on the internet are gonna let you rotate a display. So that might be something to consider. Additionally, if you do any kind of color intensive work, photo editing, video editing, that kind of thing, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get a monitor that is highly color accurate. And there are very expensive color accurate monitors out there that I do not own and that are probably not worth the money unless you're like a professional movie color grade person. But you're at least gonna to wanna to look for what's called an IPS display, which is gonna be a lot more color accurate than cheaper TN displays. Most gamers will use TN displays because they're great for a fast refresh rate and that kind of thing. But for serious color work, like photography, editing, that kind of thing, go for IPS. But of course, the main consideration that you should be making is asking yourself whether or not adding a second monitor is going to distract you because your ability to focus on one task for a long time and put all of your energy into it is hugely important in your ability to get things done. And one additional element in that equation is your ability to solve tough problems, which is why I think you should check out Brilliant. Brilliant is a learning platform that can help you learn math, science, and computer science in a way that can also boost your universal problem-solving capabilities at the same time. That's because Brilliant's library of over 50 in-depth courses all throw you into challenging problems right from the get-go. Instead of just passively intaking walls of text and sitting back and just learning by osmosis, you're being thrown into sequences of logically laid out problems that are bite-sized yet challenging and that efficiently help you learn the subject material but also get better at solving problems in general along the way. In their course library, you're gonna find courses on calculus, geometry, statistics, science courses like gravitational physics, and computer science courses like computer algorithms and Python programming. And in addition, they have a feature called daily challenges where every single day you can log in and get a new problem from a new area, which can expand your horizons and further sharpen your problem solving skills. So if you wanna get started for free and get access to the daily challenges feature, you can go over to brilliant.org slash Thomas Frank and sign up. And if you wanna get access to that entire library of more than 50 in-depth courses. You can use that link in the description below to sign up. And if you're one of the first 200 people to do so, you're going to get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Big thanks as always to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and being a big supporter of my channel. And thank you for watching as well. Hopefully you found something useful in this video. If you did, get subscribed right there so you don't miss out on new videos. Hit the like button and also click right there if you haven't gotten a copy of my book on how to earn better grades yet. Last but not least, I'll throw a couple of other videos right here and here if you want to binge my channel even more or you can smash your face into your phone screen if you're watching there because the touch screen is on there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.